I want you to think of your favorite video game protagonist. Now think about why they are your favorite in the first place. Maybe because they can run extremely fast or jump super high or even shoot lasers out of their arms. Or maybe it's because they have a great evil counterpart, like how Dr. Robotnik is to Sonic or how Ganondorf is to Link. With every great video game hero, there must be a great villain. I mean, that's usually why you play video games in the first place, right? That is to beat the big bad evil guy. There's thousands of great video game villains, but today we're gonna take a closer look at King Koopa himself, Bowser. In this video, we'll go over what makes Bowser the strongest video game character ever. Well, maybe. I'll be rating his strength, intelligence, durability, and abilities. But here's the thing, Bowser is highly inconsistent with his power, so it's hard to try to figure out just exactly how powerful he is. So we'll kind of go off of multiple games here. I know it doesn't really make much sense, but it's my video and I do what I want, goddammit. Bowser is one of the oldest villains in video game history. He made his first appearance in Super Mario Bros in 1985, and he has been the Italian man's nemesis ever since. Bowser was raised on Yoshi Island by Kamek. Bowser is one of seven star children and was destined for greatness, but despite all this, he became completely evil. Throughout the years, he has just gotten more and more evil. His main objective in pretty much every Mario game is to take over the Mushroom Kingdom and to capture Princess Peach but for over 35 years, he hasn't quite reached his goals. Some way, somehow, Mario has defeated him one way or another. Embarrassing. <laughs> now I know what you're probably thinking. Well, how could Bowser possibly be the greatest video game villain of all time if he can't even beat a fucking 50 pound plumber? <laughs> While it does only take Mario jumping on him three times to defeat him, you have to also put in consideration how strong Mario is himself. Mario, who I guess is just your quote unquote average plumber, can survive, you know, scorching heat in the desert and bear the fucking freezing tundra with just a pair of overalls, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. And for some reason, basically can breathe underwater. I didn't know the motherfucker had gills. Can't fight my sticks. No shark boy. Okay. I mean, Nintendo never exactly came out and said that he's some superhuman, so I don't know how he has the ability to basically beat Super Godzilla. For over 35 years, the Mario series has made Bowser kind of look like a chump. I mean, Bowser has been in over 21 mainline Mario series games, but always loses somehow to a normal blue collar worker, which doesn't make any sense. But I guarantee you, if you were to put Bowser in any other franchise or universe like Dragon Ball Z or Marvel, he would absolutely dominate everyone and anything he touches, okay? Starting off, will be going over his strength. Strength is defined as the quality or state of being physically strong. I'm talking about Mark Henry, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, not whatever this is. Oh, now strength is something that is pretty hard to measure, especially if we're talking about fictional characters, because it's not like Bowser's in the gym tracking his squat max or his max deadlift. No, he has better shit to do, like take over the Mushroom Kingdom and marry Peach. I can make a safe assumption here and say that most people know Bowser is strong because of the sheer size of the guy. That's quite big. Impressive but I don't think most people know exactly how strong he is. I mean, me included. I had no idea Bowser was capable of destroying entire stars before researching him. I'll get into that a little later. Bowser displays his strength the best in Mario and Luigi's Bowser's Inside Story. In this game, he lifts an entire cannonball above his head and hurls it back from where it came from. This guy pulls an entire landmass with a rope. That's kind of scary how strong that is. I'm not a comic book nerd, but I don't think little old Bruce Banner could do that anyways. He's a beta. Now granted, the island could be the size of Australia or just a big hunk of rock in the ocean, but it's still impressive. And the fact that the rope doesn't break is almost just as crazy. I mean, imagine if this rope was in the bridge to Terabithia. Poor little Leslie would still be alive today now, wouldn't she? And her and Jess would probably live happily ever after, but I guess that probably wouldn't make for a good movie though. I guess we'll never know. Hmm? Back to what I was saying, Bowser is a man amongst boys. If it weren't for a tiny pebble on the train track, Bowser would have stopped a whole ass train. I mean, Spider-Man stopped a pretty big train in Spider-Man 2, so if a 19 year old boy can do it, then I'm pretty sure this oversized lizard should be able to do it, right? 
Wait, is he a lizard or like a turtle or a dragon shit? I don't know, dude. And Super Mario Odyssey, he busts through the walls with his claws. And in Mario 3D Land, he is strong enough to punch through the ground beneath himself. As Giant Bowser, he is able to pull himself out of a black hole. And honestly, what the f could possibly stop this guy? other than Mario. We need to talk about parallel universes. I was going to try to compare this to something in real life, but there's nothing that can actually compare to this amount of strength because it's not even relatively possible. Overall, I'd give him a nine out of 10 in this category, just solely based on pure strength and pure strength alone. And he uses it in different ways too. He is in a 10 out of 10 because in order to unlock godly amounts of strength, he has to enter in other forms such as giant Bowser. Durability is a very important aspect of every video game villain. Well, the great ones at least. To pose an actual threat to the protagonist, you must have great durability or the ability to survive for long periods of time. Like I stated before, Bowser has been Mario's arch nemesis for over 35 years. So obviously Bowser would have to have great durability to last such a long time. And being part turtle, it only makes sense that he would have great survivability. I mean, them bitches live like a hundred years, but unlike turtles, he doesn't really rely heavily on his shell to protect himself, but rather his fireproof skin. Yes, fireproof skin. I've seen Bowser fall onto lava that's in his own castle and completely survive it like it was nothing. I've seen him get blown up like he does in Mario Galaxy. I've seen him get thrown completely off stages in Super Smash Bros. Hell, I've seen the guy fall into several black holes and still survive. If you played with him in Super Smash Bros Ultimate, you'd notice that all his smash attacks have a few frames of super armor. And with super armor, Bowser doesn't flinch or take knockback from weaker attacks. So essentially Bowser can just power through uncharged Samus charge shots all day, every day. Also in the Super Smash Bros series, Bowser often is one of, if not the hardest characters to defeat because of his sheer size. In most games, he is usually twice the size of Mario. So that would make him 10 feet, two inches tall, which could honestly be seen as a negative because this just makes him a bigger target to hit. Bowser weighs a whopping 1600 pounds. For reference, a female hippo is around 2000 pounds. So to think a giant turtle with spice on his shell is almost as heavy as a hippo, scares the f out of me. Bowser uses this to his advantage, of course, by sponging attacks and then dishing out attacks of his own. His unbelievable durable skin and his large size allows him to survive the craziest of situations. Bowser has stood the test of time. His track record speaks for itself. He has lasted for over 35 years and is still at it with Mario. And because of that, overall, I'd give him a 10 out of 10 in this category. Now in this section, I'm gonna be talking about what makes Bowser's character absolutely unique his abilities and moves. Much like his strength, his special abilities are super slept on. I won't be going over all his abilities and moves as that would probably take a year off of your life. Find your line now. <gasps> but I will go over some of the main ones. I'm sure everyone knows the dude can shoot fire out of his mouth, but did you guys know that those same fireballs are damn near as hot as the sun? <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. Yeah, that's 3.6 million degrees at least. That sounds hot, but just exactly how hot is that? Well, the closest we as humans got to the sun was by using the Parker Solar Probe, which got as close to 5.3 million miles away from the sun back in 2021. And that took just about 60 years to make. So if you're a normal human being, not named Mario. Me? <laughs> just hanging around and Bowser just so happens to shoot a fireball anywhere in your proximity, you'd probably die. Oh, and I forgot the fireballs are capable of homing in on targets. So if you're thinking about running away from them, think again. Whirling Fortress is another one of Bowser's most popular moves he uses. Seen in almost all of the Mario mainline games, he tucks himself into his spiky shell and rapidly spins. He then uses the spikes on his shell to attack. Spin so fast, in fact, that he is able to get some air time and basically almost fly. But because he's so heavy, he can't stay up there for too long. In the Super Mario Bros. manual, it states that he is a powerful, dark magic user who turned the people of the Mushroom Kingdom into stones, bricks, and plants. He technically is crushing the souls of former humans. Bowser showcases dark magic the most in Super Mario Galaxy. In Super Mario Galaxy, he has the ability to shoot electricity from his hands by using electrokinesis. He also creates shockwaves and creates lightning bolts. In Super Mario Odyssey, spoil Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. You're black. What? During the final battle with Mario, Bowser uses geokinesis where he's able to just create rocks out of thin air to throw at Mario. In Mario Galaxy, he's able to control the earth and turn part of his body into stone. Oh my god! 
Along with that, he can also teleport as seen in Super Mario 64. I'm not quite sure how Bowser got all these powers, but my guess is that he was raised by Koopa Magician Kamek, so it only makes sense. If you're not convinced on how strong Bowser truly is, well, wait till you hear this. He does all this as normal Bowser, but here's the thing. Nintendo figured, oh, this guy isn't strong enough. Let's give him an even more powerful form, Giant <coughs> Bowser. Giant Bowser doesn't gain any powers, but rather is just enhancing the powers he already has. Think of it like Goku when he goes Kaioken. Now I'll show you the Kaioken! It's not exactly written in stone how he becomes Giant Bowser. In some games, he just magically turns into his final form, but in Bowser's Inside Story, he turns into Giant Bowser when he gets a lot of adrenaline. He also can become Giant Bowser when he absorbs the power of a grand star in Super Mario Galaxy. So think of the Hulk, but instead can shoot fire out of his mouth. Another popular form that Bowser takes on is Dry Bowser. The first time Bowser can become Dry Bowser is when he falls into lava in the beginning of New Super Mario Bros. and the only thing left behind is his skeletal remains. Similar to regular Dry bones he is immune to all elemental attack that means he is immune to all of mario's fire and ice attack theoretically dry bowser is just like regular dry bones so he would be able to put himself back together some people speculate if dry bowser and regular bowser are two completely different species but for this video i'm gonna just pretend like it's a different form because i think it is one form of bowser i think is supremely overlooked is his metal variant bowser can become metal bowser by swallowing a metal mushroom in this form he becomes even more durable making him nearly invincible think of it more like a suit of armor rather than an entirely new form. Metal Bowser is so durable that a fall from orbit only caused his shell to crack a little bit. In the end, I would give Bowser a 10 out of 10 ranking in this category as well. The different forms would always keep his enemies guessing and his magical powers would probably just overpower his opponents. Most villains are either super strong or super intelligent, so it's really rare to see a character have both traits. This may shock you, but Bowser is a genius. Yes, I said it. Now, he isn't your typical genius like Professor X or an evil scientist like Dr. Robotnik, but he does have a deceptive amount of wit. Considering Bowser uses a ton of gadgets, that really got me to question. On an IQ level, how smart is Bowser really? Bowser may not look smart or talk smart, but Bowser claims to have an IQ of 9,800. Which is the same as Mario's. Just for reference, that's about 61 Stephen Hawking's put together. I know, I know, Bowser Jr. is more known for using gadgets more, but his dad isn't a slouch, by any means. In every Mario iteration, it seems like Bowser has some new invention to show off, whether that be his drill claw he uses in Super Mario RPG, or his safety ring he uses in Bowser's Inside Story. In Super Mario World, he introduced the world to his Koopa Clown Car, which is his main way of travel, and I'm not gonna lie, it looks dumb as hell, but it's a pretty nice way to travel. The Koopa Clown Car can go the speed of sound which if you ask me is eh, kind of fast, I guess. Just for reference, the speed of sound is equivalent to 761 miles an hour, which is just six miles slower than fucking Sonic the Hedgehog, clocking in at 767 miles an hour. So when Bowser's in his car, he may go almost the same speed as Sonic. I mean, that's kind of crazy if you ask me. His vehicle may look absolutely ridiculous considering it makes different faces, but the thing is completely decked out with all kinds of weapons. In Mario Party 8, he's seen having two bullet bill blasters and a laser gun attachments, which which can be shot in rapid succession, making it even harder to dodge. One of Bowser's main approaches to defeating his enemies is throwing a bunch of <laughs> You probably think I'm joking, or maybe not, because I'm assuming since you clicked on this video, you probably play the game at this point, but that's besides the point. Dude straight up throws hammers and giant spiky balls, which could crush any typical mortal. Bowser's intelligence supersedes most people's expectations. I would give him an overall score of nine out of 10. The only thing stopping him from being a 10 out of 10 in this category is the use of his intelligence. I mean, he does have cool gadgets he uses, but in my opinion, he uses them completely wrong. Let me ask you this. If you had a vehicle that was capable of going the speed of sound, wouldn't you feel a little embarrassed that you lost to this dude? What the f now, originally I was gonna leave this part out of the video, but it wouldn't be fair to only list off his strengths and not address his weaknesses. I mean, Bowser isn't any different from any other villain. Every super villain has to have a weakness. I mean, that's how the main characters are usually able to beat them in the end. I saved this part for last because while Bowser's intelligence is great, his skillfulness and strategy is probably his weakest asset. Bowser has a plethora of gadgets and minions at his disposal, but the way he uses them is pitiful. Most times, Bowser's own plans lead to his own demise. He's done that ever since day one. In Super Mario Bros, he stands in front of an ax that Mario would end up using to cut down the bridge. Considering Bowser built the castle himself, why would he want the axe there to begin with, other than for Mario to use it against himself? I mean, you can't come up with a worse game plan than that. It's crazy to know that he brainwashed millions and millions of Goombas and Koopas to follow his leadership just for them to aimlessly walk off of cliffs. Couldn't Bowser have come up with a better plan? Well, that's the thing. 
Bowser has come up with multiple different strategies to defeat Mario, but because Mario can adapt to pretty much any environment, it's virtually impossible to stop him. I understand Nintendo wants their golden boy Mario to always win against Bowser, but I mean, come on. This guy is like Thanos on steroids. I mean, to his own detriment, Bowser is often seen as a laughing stock of Nintendo, but there's a reason why he's been around for so long. It's not like it's a coincidence. This guy is extremely powerful, durable, and smart. Most great villains only have one of these three traits, and if they're lucky, they have two, but it's extremely rare to see a character as strong as Bowser. Overall, I'd give Bowser a 9 out of 10. His absolute massive frame, his strength, and his wits are absolutely undeniable. But because his strategy and his skillfulness is pretty much lackluster, that's the reason why he's not a 10 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video, let me know what kind of videos you guys would want to see from me next. And until next time, peace.